Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Planescape Torment. We left off, we explored most of the brothel. We're looking for Vivian's scent, and we're also looking for Marissa's veil. We have Dolora, who is missing her heart. Apparently her boyfriend won't give it back to her, so I guess they broke up poorly. And we've got... Oh, Echo, whose voice is missing. And we might be able to get that back by visiting the Curiosity Shop, so we'll do that. We also got one final room here. Oh, but there's... Oh, oh there she is. Wow, she was camouflaged. Yves the Tail Chaser. This fetching young woman has a faraway look in her soft, sea-green eyes. Greetings. Greetings. I am Ye Eves? Eves? I am Eves, the tail chaser. What a coincidence! I, too, chase tails. <laughs> Eves continues, unperturbed. Have you come to trade tails? Sure, I like to trade tails. Eves nods. I would like that very much, yes. We'll tell her the story of Farid. Eves leans forward as you tell the tale of the fall of Farid. She seems to devour your every word. As you finish, she smiles at you. I shall remember this tale, and now I have one for you. Go on. Once came a man who had experienced the most beautiful thing in the multiverse. It was his intention to place the experience within one of the Civic Fest Hall's sensory stones. Magical devices which held feelings and memories for an eternity, leaving them for others to partake of. But he thought about it. Wouldn't its being shared dilute the experience? So he held it to himself, precious thing that it was, and it aged with the memory. But as he aged, the memory became tarnished and beaten, and he could no longer recall the glory of the experience. Oh wow, how sad. I have a question for you, Eves. Hey, Eves? Eves? Why are you called the Tail Chaser? Once upon a time, a girl came to the Oracle who was rumored to know many things and asked of it a boon. Her life was in need of direction, so she asked this Oracle as to what would give her her purpose. Now, the oracle was not evil, but it was vague and tended towards drink, which caused it to be obscure in many manners of judgment and focus. Its only answer to the girl's question was that within one story that she would hear in her lifetime was the truth that she sought. The girl went off and collected stories, which she chases to this day, not knowing which of the thousands hold told the truth. Such is the danger of a foolish question, and the wisdom of an unspoken one. Wow. Oh, this is pretty... pretty deep thought-provoking stuff here. So what are you doing here, then? I assume you're here to find a story. I collect tales and trade them with others who've t tales of their own. Well, let's trade another tale. Let's tell her the story of the Alley of Lingering Sighs. Eves leans forward as you tell the tale of the alley giving birth. She seems to devour your every word. As you finish, she smiles at you. I shall remember this tale. And now I have one for you. Before I begin, I must ask, do you know what a Modron is? Yes. Then I shall tell you the tale of the clock and the quadrone. Once upon a time, there existed a Modron. It was newly created, its logic fresh and untested and it had come to Sigil, following the commands of its Modron superiors. It knew nothing but commands and dictates of obedience and passing along the orders of its superiors, for you see, Modrons are only aware of the commands of their immediate superiors. They have no grasp of a higher authority. Until this one. One day it came upon a small shop, within which was a small clock that could no longer tell time. It was cracked along the edges, the wheels of its hands broken. The Modron immediately set itself to work at getting the parts to fix the broken clock. It made a new wooden housing for the clock's parts, replaced the bent springs, 
carefully filed and oiled the clockwork machinery and carved new hands from the sparse metal available to it. The newly paired clock's precise ticking reminded it of the great gears of Mechanus, and it comforted it as much as anything may comfort the Modron. And what the Modron never came to understand was that it truly loved this clock that it had worked on, and for reasons it could not explain, elected to remain in sigil and be with the clock for the rest of its years. Aww. That's a, that's a sweet story. So, Eves, you look familiar. Is your mother named Ivana? I think this was the woman who owns the museum. Eves nods. Yes, but she and I no longer speak, just as I shall speak no more of her. Very well, then. What can you tell me about the silent prostitute, Echo? Echo? Eves frowns, thinking. I once heard a tale of a girl who knew the word that, if spoken, would undo the multiverse. Perhaps this is Echo. Ask Dolora, though. I understand that she sometimes meets with one who knew Echo before she stopped speaking. Another question for you. Let's trade another tale. Let's tell her the story of the Alley of Dangerous Angles. Eves leans forward as you tell the tale of the Alley of Dangerous Angles and how it came to be. She seems to devour your every word. As you finish, she smiles at you. I shall remember this tale. And now I have one for you. The Lady's Suitor. The tale concerns a suitor of the Lady of Pain, one of many over the years. He was a young man who was obsessed with the Mistress of Sigil. He saw her everywhere, in every corner of her city. He would hear the rustling of her robes, the scrape of her blades, and grew infatuated beyond all reason. He hoped that if he worshipped her, that he would at last be able to see her. And so worship her he did. He was found dead on the blood-soaked steps of his own home, grievous stab wounds covering the whole of his body, but his eyes were wide open, and upon his lips was a triumphant smile. I guess he got what he wanted. Eves, I'm trying to find Marissa's Crimson Veil. Do you know where it might be? Eve shakes her head. But Marissa is an interesting tale. Would you hear of it? Yeah, go ahead. Once upon a time, in a world of heroes, and in a time of petty, childish gods, there were three sisters. Cursed with a hideous appearance, they were considered demons by the people of the land and forever shunned. One missed her sisters terribly, yet left that world with its shame behind, but exchanged the pettiness of a pantheon for the pettiness of self. Hmm. I'll trade another trick tale with you if I can. Uh, Bort, do you have a story you, you can trade? Me? Why do I get to tell a story? Just tell a story, Mort. Fine, fine. An elderly man was sitting alone in the dark path, right? He wasn't certain of which direction to go, and he'd forgotten both where he was traveling to and who he was. He'd sat down for a moment to rest his weary legs and suddenly looked up to see an elderly woman before him. She grinned toothlessly and with a cackle spoke, Now for your third wish. What will it be? Huh. That's uncannily like my memory from the museum, isn't it? Third wish? The man was baffled. How can it be a third wish if I haven't had a first and a second wish? You've had two wishes already, the hag said, but your second wish was for me to return everything to the way it was before you had made your first wish. That's why you remember nothing, because everything is the way it was before you made any wishes. She cackled at the poor Burke. So it is that you have one wish left. All right, said the man. I don't believe this, but there is no harm in wishing. I wish to know who I am. Funny, said the old woman as she granted his wish and disappeared forever. That was your first wish. 
Eve smiles. An interesting tale, Mort. And now I have one for you and your companion. The Fiend's Game. A fiend sometimes wandered the wilderness of a certain prime world in the guise of a friendly old man. One day, he came upon some hunters in the wood. What are you doing? The fiend asked. The hunters told him, and the fiend nodded. I have never been on a hunt before. The hunters invited the old man to come along, and the group eventually came upon a glade where several deer were grazing. The hunters carried crossbows, but did not fire, and the fiend asked them why. They are unarmed, the hunters chuckled, pegging their crossbows. We hunt nothing that does not have the ability to defend itself. After all, where's the sport in that? The fiend nodded at this, and promptly gated in three of his fellows. The hunters led them on a merry chase, but eventually they were caught and eaten. <laughs> Interesting, that one. I guess, uh, morality doesn't matter <laughs> in the end if, I, uh, well, hmm. They considered themselves honorable, and the demon was not nearly as such. I'm trying to find Vivian's scent. Do you know where it might be? He shakes her head. Speak with Nenny. She is forever pacing about, observing everything intently. Hmm. Do you know anything about Ravel Puzzlewell? Uh, the tale of Ravel Puzzlewell, frightener of children, begins and ends with a question. What can change the nature of a man? Many were the times she posed this riddle to those who approached her, those who sought to glean from her the strange magics that she alone seemed to possess. All attempted to answer her query, but to no avail, and they found the price of her their wrong answer to be some horrible fate, always more terrible than the last victims. To recount their various torments would be to speak of things that nightmares are woven from. The tale strikes me in this way. Ravel herself knew not the answer to this question, but she lusted for such an answer. Only the why of the matter remained in question. Why did the nature of a man matter to one of the Grey Sisters, especially to one of such power as Ravel? It is said that she put the question to the Lady of Pain, not directly, but shouted it to Sigil itself, daring for the Lady to answer. When no reply was forthcoming, she wove terrible magics that threatened to open the cage and let the fury of the plains roll in like a wave. She received no other answer than banishment. To this day, no one knows the answer to Ravel's question. And now there is no one to petition, for Ravel herself is gone, lost to the plains. Updated my journal. Wait, there is more. Though my tale ends with Ravel's demise, there are some that claim the hag still lives. There was a silent prostitute here who once talked of such things, but she speaks no longer. If she would speak to you, she might tell you more of Ravel. Oh, wait, can you tell me about her? Okay, and then she goes back to talk about how I should ask Delora. Let's trade one more tale, and then we'll come back and talk trade more tales later. Let's tell her the story of Requin's curse. Eve's leans forward as you tell her the tale of Requin's ophiterous curse. She seems to devour your every word. As you finish, she smiles at you. I shall remember this tale. And now, I have one for you. The Gilded Tale. Upon the plain of Ysgard, in the Gilded Hall, where those sentients that seek the pleasure of gullet and loin can be found, they indulge these passions in earnest, never realizing that the doors of the hall never open, and that there is no clear path back to the Civic Fest Hall. They are the unwanted sentients, the ones that do not truly believe in the faction, but instead seek only pleasure for pleasure's sake. Are prisoners who do not realize they are such truly prisoners? Oh, probably not, actually. I suppose everyone gets what they want. Thank you, Eves. I will talk to you later. All right. I wonder if we can talk to her mother. This is Delora. Dolores' eyes flash as he sees you. Did you find him? Has he agreed to return the keys to my heart? No, not yet. Farewell. All right, let's... Hmm. All right. 
let's check with Lewis, the cabinet. Maybe he has Marissa's veil. This is Lewis, the talking Amore. Hey, Lewis. Yes? I'm trying to find Marissa's crimson veil. Do you know where it might be found? I heard she used to walk about in a crimson veil, but that she had recently taken to her room and darkened it. I did not know what had occurred. So this veil of hers is missing, then? Yes, it is. Hmm. What can you tell me about the silent prostitutes? Yes, Echo. She can't always have been mute, you know. Otherwise, I am most certain she would have learned some other means of communicating in the meantime. It must be a recent occurrence. Do you know anything about Ravel Puzzlewell? Few, few folk who've dwelled in Sigil for any length of time don't. I must wonder, though. What is it about her you wish to know? I need to find her. You're mad, you know. Quite mad. Utterly barmy, I believe, is a common term for it. Ravel was banished from Sigil long ago, and if she's not dead, you'll wish you were, should you somehow succeed in finding her. She devoured all those who sought her out before, it is said, and will likely do the same disservice. I would leave well enough alone. One more question, Lewis. Actually, is there anything new here? Nope. All right. Farewell. All right. All right. Did we find out anything? I can't re It's been a few days, so I have to remember... About how see if I get her event. We've still haven't done that, huh? Maybe Hmm. Maybe Nenny knows where it is. Done. Oh, Nenny's out walking about. All right, Nenny, where'd you, where'd you go? So the girls okay. will occasionally endure be their places. Huh? In enduring, grow strong. I'm pretty sure this was Nenny's place. She she isn't in here, right? She's not in here. All right, where did Nenny go? Is this her? No, that's Vivian. That's Echo. All the girls are out. All right. That's the patron. There's Dolora. There's Nenny. Done. Oh, she really does walk all over the place, spying on everyone, just like just like we're doing. Well, met, good sir. I'm Nenny. And how are you this fun? Oh, we've met before. Nenny giggles and smiles gleefully at you. I'm sorry. I knew you looked familiar, though. That's all right, Nenny. I have a question for you. I'm trying to find Marissa's Crimson Veil. Do you know where it might be? Updated my journal. I bet I do. I saw that nasty Kamixie Adderton sneaking out of Marissa's room one night. They're both meanies, you know, but Kamixie's really awful. Anyway, I talked to her first. All right, thank you, Nettie, very much. Yes, mistress. Oh, someone's being yelled at by her. Might as well. I hear your words. I shall serve. Take this. Oof. And this. Ouch. And don't come back, you pitiful excuse of a man. Thank you, mistress. Wow. Good for her. What's up? I'm sure there okay. are people that really like that. I'm, I'm not one of them. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, it's you again. Just can't get enough of me, huh? I have some questions for you, Kid Mixie. She looks annoyed. Fine. Whatever. Ask. I was told you were seen sneaking away from Marissa's chambers recently. Is that connected with her missing veil somehow? Kimisi f flies into a rage. Who told you th She suddenly falls silent, glaring at you through narrowed eyes. If I was there, Burke, I didn't take her filthy veil. Search my room if you like. I catch you sniffing at my britches, though. I'll see to it you're never allowed in here again. Why would everyone- Why would anyone ever sniff at your britches? Updated my journal. Beats me. Someone nicked more than a few pair of them, though. My favorite leather brazier, too, with the iron studs. Huh. Okay. Sure, Lewis. Done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if articles of clothing are going missing, Lewis must be doing something with them. Hmm? Huh? Done. Huh? 
I have a question for you, Lewis. I'm looking, trying to find Marissa's Crimson Veil. You know where it might be? It's gotta be here. How? So why are you being a, a so why are you being an Amori in this brothel? Let's see. No, I can't do that. Darn it. Alright. I'm positive he's he's got it. Where's one of the prostitutes slicking lust? As Luster comes to veil to find me. Journal. I asked Kimixi about her being seen sneaking away from Mrs. Chambers, and she denied having taken Crimson Veil. Vale. She did, however, claim that her own room had been burgled. Huh. Let's see if Nenny right. Nine, Nine Eyes might have oh, right. any other information. Where is Nenny? I shall serve. Did she go back to her room? She might not have. Most of the girls don't once they I'm leave. Gone. Nope, she's not in there. All right. Oh, Nanny, where did you go? <laughs> Man, where where could it be? All right, everyone, I'll be I'll be back. I want to figure out who I need to talk to next. Okay, here's Nanny. Let's see if we can ask her about this as well. Kimisi said someone's been taking things from her room too. Have you seen anything odd? Updated my journal. Nanny's eyes suddenly go wide. Oh, that's right. You know. Once I saw a man sneaking out of Kamixi's room while she was out talking to a patron. I watched the front doors all that day, but he never, ever left. Isn't that odd? I don't think he could have made it out with, out of a window, and so I never figured out where he went. And then I totally forgot about it. Weird, huh? Thank you, Danny. Done. Okay. Oh, no, she nodded at us. All right, so... It's Lewis, and we had to... We had to talk to Nanny first. All right. All right, Lewis. Lewis. And then he told me she saw a man leaving Kamixi at her tongue's room. I think that was you, Lewis. You think? Think! How could you be so alarmingly rude, so ludicrously presumptuous, as to spout forth such an accusation without being absolutely certain of your charges? How dare you, impertinent brassy cur! Why, I ought to, as Lewis rails and curses, his drawers open and close. You notice a small bundle of crimson cloth tucked alongside some clothes. The repeated opening and closing of the Amore drawers make it difficult to grab, however. You stand poised at the edge of the Amore. It keeps gabbing on and on, but it never seems to stay open long enough for you to try to grab the cloth. Alright, let's... We got a good dex, let's do it. You succeed in yanking the cloth, a translucent crimson veil, from the Amore. Tucking it away, you notice that it is perfumed with a light, exotic, and most ple pleasant fragrance. Damn it, you rogue! Black card scoundrel! Give that back this instant! That's not yours. That's an exceedingly personal garment that belongs to a lady of this establishment, and they would not appreciate your filing their private things. Oh, but it's alright for you, you wooden pervert. I'm not doing anything so criminal and malicious as you are. I'm merely soaking in the sensations necessary to my growth as an individual. Yes, yes. Farewell, Lewis. All right. So, this has Vivian's personal scent on it. So Marissa did take it, and Kim Mixie took probably her veil, and then it got stolen from her. So they're all thieves. Interesting. I'm gone. I'm gone. Marissa's cold, cruel voice hisses from out of the darkness. It returns. You have a reason for coming this time, I trust? Or are you just more of your pointless questions? Actually, Marissa, I brought your crimson veil. Then would you hand it over? Oh, then would you please hand it over? Of course, here you Updated are. Updated my journal. You hold the crimson veil before you and feel her take it from your hands. Ah, yes, much better. Two shining points of red light appear before you as she opens her eyes. So that's what you look like. Perhaps I would have been better off with my eyes shut. Watch that forked tongue of yours, Marissa. Do not get me even started. Fine, I have a question. I'm trying to find Vivian's scent. Do you know where it might be? Not a clue. Alright then. 
Oh, should I have given it first to someone else? All right, never mind. I've learned some new tricks. Oh, but we we detected that it smelled. Maybe we if we tell Vivian, she will go and yell at Marissa. And also, Anna leveled up. So let's do that right now. She gained a thief rank. So she gained four hit points and 20 thief skills. Coming for you, Vivian. Marissa's got your. Marissa's got your scent. That just sounds so weird to say. <laughs> Vivian greets you with a polite half smile. Had you had any luck in finding my scent, perchance? In a way, I believe it was on Marissa's lost veil, which I returned to her. She has your scent. Updated my journal. For the briefest of moments, Vivian's eyes smolder with rage. She does, does she? Well, we shall see about that. Do not move. I shall return shortly. There, that solves that. That hideous witch. Always stealing my perfumes, but never did I think she would have the audacity to steal my own personal scent. Huh. She suddenly shakes out her crimson hair, and in moments you are surrounded by the most intensely exotic and arousing scent you have ever had the pleasure of smelling. That smells great. It does, does it not? Vivian's smile suddenly disappears. Well, I suppose you shall be waiting your reward now. Stand closer to me, scarred one. You step closer to Vivian. She takes your hand and, turning it over, takes a single cautious sniff at your wrist. Whew. She wrinkles her nose. Vinegar? Or embalming fluid? Here, I will remove this smell from you. She mutters a few strange syllables, and a light tingling sensation spreads over your skin. In moments, your chemical reek lessens substantially. There. How is that? People should be less eager to avoid conversation with you now. Thank you, Vivian. Charisma plus All one. Right. Wow. What's my charisma now? 18. 16 naturally. So I probably want one All more right. point in it. All right. All right. Well, let's what? go. Sure, why not? Help I out. will hear you. Delora. And did anyone level up? We got a ton of experience right there. I did not. Mort did not. Dakon did not. And neither did... Wow. You got 25,000 experience points? No one leveled. We still need a ton more. Alright, well, well, let's head on out. And we will now go to the curiosity shop. And I remember a demon tongue there. So I think we'll go pick that up. I think we'll talk to that gentleman, and we will say that we're the person who dies, like who can be killed, since apparently everyone knows about it. Rumors are getting around that I'm around and now looking and looking for. I, I, I'm apparently telling everyone that I can be killed and resurrect. This just proves two people can share a secret. One of them, are, one of them is dead. Done. I remember this now, walking up here, and I remember that there's another item we'll need from here Done. to do this okay. quest. Balance in all things. Let's. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna meta game that way though. Rashika gives a quick half bow. Welcome back. Here to buy something. I am. Would you care to examine the weapons and charms, or some of my more exotic acquisitions? I would like the fiend's tongue. Uh, sure, so let's go ahead and take it for 66 coppers. I'll take it. Yes, wishy coppers, a wise choice. The copper you pour into her hand seems to disappear in a moment, the moment it touches her palm. She hands you the item. Please, enjoy your newest acquisition.
Farewell. Yeah, I remember this because of what's gonna what's gonna happen. But I'm not gonna meta game. Nope. Done. Not any more than I already have, at least. Let's go and give this to Echo. Supposedly, this can restore. Oh, let's actually talk to Ivana first. Wait, Yvonne. I think it's Ivana. I'm gone. I'm gone. Maybe she won't talk to us about Done. Eves, but maybe she will. Ivana smiles and motions you towards her. Greetings again. Do you have questions regarding one of the pieces? Uh, no, but I have other questions. Please, ask. You look familiar to me. Do you know someone named Eves? That is my daughter. For a moment, there was a hint of sadness in the milky whiteness of her eyes. We no longer speak to one another. Why is that? There is nothing to be said between us. She has gone off in pursuit of stories, all for reasons I am unaware of. She told me a tale that might answer that question. Ivana raises her eyebrows. Oh? Tell me. Would you please? I'd most appreciate it, sir. Tell her tale chaser's story and of her endless quest for the tale that holds the truth she seeks. Ivana nods slowly. I had no idea. I will see her now. I thank you, good sir, for bringing me this news of my only daughter. As she speaks, color slowly bleeds into her pale irises until her eyes are a brilliant shade of green. Your eyes? Can you see now, Ivana? She nods, smiling. That's all I wish to know. Farewell. Oh! I hope things go well. All right. All right. We're gonna let some time pass. This because I have a hunch if I just walk in there and talk to Tail Chaser, that the game's gonna just assume time has passed. So we're gonna make it more realistic, and we're gonna pay a visit into the Civic Fest Hall where we will look for the gentleman Delora wants us to find. While we're there, we'll look for Jumble Murder Sense. Let's actually save the game. We've actually done quite a little bit today, haven't we? Okay. Everyone, you should all, you should all know that in my time playing this game, I never explored the Civic Fest Hall. I found Jumble Murder Sense before. I, I believe I did. I think I did. A, lo a long, long time ago. And I don't remember what the, the person is that we're looking for, Dolores, what he looks like. But I know we'll find him in here and be able to complete Dolores' quest. But it will take a little bit more effort than just finding him. So... We're going to explore the Civic Fest Hall a little bit while we're here until we find those two people. And when we find them, we'll then complete the other quests for the brothel. Alright, so let's get started. So, who's this gentleman? Splinter. This towering man's golden skin sparkles slightly, almost as if it was metallic. Whether it's his actual flesh or merely painted on, you cannot tell. He regards you coolly as you approach, giving a respectful bow as you draw near. Welcome to the Civic Fest Hall, traveler. We are Splinter, doorman to the Fest Hall, and Priest King of Ur. How may we help you? Despite his humble offer of aid, his voice is powerful and commanding, a deep and rumbling sound that resonates within the chamber. How can you help me, Splinter? We do many things in this fine hall, Traveler. We answer questions guests might have regarding it or its inhabitants. We direct both visitors and members of the Society of Sensation alike to the sensoriums or lecture halls. We also accept new members into the society. Lastly, it is through us that purchases from the society's vaults are made. Spells, items, and such. How could I buy something from the Sensate vaults? You must be a member of the Society of Sensation. Okay, I have another question for you. I don't want to join a faction quite yet. Tell me about the Fest Hall. The Civic Fest Hall is one of the largest buildings in Sigil, fitting as it is home to the Society of Sensation, the city's largest faction. 
it holds dispensoriums, lecture halls, training chambers, and such for visitors and members of society alike. What are the training chambers? There are three, one for warriors, one for thieves, and one for practitioners of magic. If you would find them, pass through the middle door on the eastern wall, and the door beyond that as well. You will be at the center of the, of the hallway, along one that goes east. There are three doors along the southern wall. Each door leads to one of the training chambers. Um, can you tell me... Let's think here. I want to ask... About you, Splinter. Uh, there is little to say that we have not told you. We are Splinter, Doorman to the Festhall, Demigod, Son of Ishar, and Priest King of Ur. Plained walkers come to our world and told us of the Society of Sensation. We were fascinated and returned with them. We left Ur in the capable hands of our Queen so that we might come to this place and experience servitude and humility for a time. As time does not pass here as it does in Ur, the century we have spent here will be as mere several months in our own world. After another decade or so, we imagine we shall be ready to return to Ur and rule it once more. I see. I have another question. There was someone I was looking for here. Who was it you were seeking, Traveler? Merriman. Merriman is usually pacing back and forth around the lecture halls. Travel through the middle door on the eastern wall, and the door beyond that as well. He will likely be wandering within the hallway you will find yourself in. So go east twice. There was someone else I was looking for as well. I'm looking for... Montag, a, facto a factotum here. Ah, Montag is busy. He's a busy young man. He can usually be found moving between this chamber and the three that lie in the eastern wall. He was the scout outside. I guess I can't ask about Jumbo, Jumbo Murder Sense. I'm sure we'll find him, though. All right, never mind. Thank you very much, Splinter. We'll come back and ask him more questions. Right now, I'm interested in finding... Jumbo. All right. And Merriman. Oh! It is I. Dakon, can you please let us through the door? We have a poor right. gentleman behind Done. us. What's up, Chief? Why not? Oh, I think that's... Hold on. Is that you, Jumble? Oh, Jumble murder sense. This short, balding man's orange tunic is rather sizable... Uh, and rather sizable gut. Give him the look of a walking pumpkin. He is absentmindedly patting his large paunch with a slow rhythm, as if it were a drum. The man's odd, crooked smile and strange gleam in his eyes would make him look a bit mad. Greetings, sir. The man gives an exaggerated, flourishing bow, and presents a small card which reads only Jumble Murder Sense. Zalsasect, Zorcerer, Extraordinaire. He then snatches the card from your grasp and proceeds to eat it, grinning wildly all the time. Mort whispers, somewhere in asylum is one Barney Short. I have some questions. 